Right, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you all here and my comrades from Post 2 for a special occasion here tonight to honour four special people in our post. They were the pathfinders for us. They were the first people that went overseas with the Irish Army serving the UN. And they're the main pathfinders which many thousand of us followed in their footsteps. I'd like to thank them. For the most, I would like to thank John, Mary O'Mahony, and their family for letting us host this presentation here yeah, tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And without further ado, the first person I'm going to call tonight is the proprietor of the bar, John O'Mahony. They make a presentation to his best comrade in the army, Paddy Flynn. Paddy Flynn, the police. Very good, Paddy. 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 Very good, Just a little bit of history about Paddy's service. In, uh, it was in July 1960 when Paddy first landed in the Congo and he served with the 32nd Infantry Battalion. And that tour of duty lasted until January 1961. Now, he must have been on to something. He had to be on to something because he went back again in May, November. From May to November in 1962, they served at the 37th Battalion. In choosing the presentations we have here, we looked at the weapons our heroes here would have maybe used or been used to back in the Congo and have been familiar with back in those early years. Unfortunately, we couldn't get a bow and arrow for you, Paddy, but anyway. I'm a cat you the So, as the chairman said, we're calling on our, our good comrade here, John O'Mahony, to make our presentations. And John, if you wish a few words, Paddy, stay quiet. We've let no time. <laughs> the presentation is for Paddy. It's actually here. <laughs> this is one of the weapons. It's a, a 303. If you guys would have been used it way back in those days. And a 303 bullet. It's a lovely presentation. John, tear away. Your weapon's your own. Well now, in all fairness to Paddy Flynn, I know him for many years. We've gone down a lot of roads together. Too many of my think Paddy. Mm -hmm. And we served together in Wuffentainen and enjoyed it. And all I can say is, it didn't make the greatest time off. To, to, to present this to you, Paddy, of all people going, it, I, words fail me to describe what I'm doing. John, 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 just hold it. Yeah, the, and show the pack. Now, one more. Lovely. That's it. Hold on, lads. Thanks, John. Thanks, Paddy. Thank you. I'm back again. <laughs> <laughs> our second presentation tonight, I'd like to call on our treasurer, Bobby Woods, to present it to our president of Post 2, Matt Murphy. <laughs> Just a small bit of history there while uh, the two lads are preparing. Master of Duty started in July 1960, on January 1961 with the 32nd Infantry Battalion, and Matt served with the headquarters with the Polini Adam, the military police. Okay, you have it. This is Matt's. Matt would have been used to what's called the, uh, the Gustav, a Swedish weapon, and this is what. Matt would have used back then. That is. Well, let me give a great pleasure on behalf of Post 2 Matt to present you with this. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Matt. Thank you very much. Just give me another test. Just make sure, right? Lovely. Good. Very Thank good. you. Very nice. nice one. Matt, you, <laughs> one question is all in our mind. You served at the same time as Paddy in the 32nd Battalion as a lovely policeman. How many times had you to investigate him? <laughs> <laughs> How many times did you have to investigate Paddy Flynn? Arrest him. 
Our next presentation, I'd like to present this myself to a very good comrade of mine, who I showed him how to play darts and pool, <laughs> and a great man, and I used Black Album for years, that all he ever seen in the Congo was a born out. So I'd like to present Tom, for the very <laughs> present. <laughs> Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I had to get that in for me. I'd like to make this present here to one of my best friends in the town. And in the post, Tom. Tom. Tom, oh. oh. yeah. 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 I'll just give a bit of information about Tom. Tom's first trip to the Congo was in November of 1961. There was a wee thing behind this. He came One minute, one minute, John, I'd finish. Congratulations. On that particular pack, it's an FN. 7.62 millimeter rifle. Before Tom goes off, Tom's first yeah. trip was in the Congo from November 1961 until May 1962 <laughs> with the 36th Infantry Battalion. And rumor has it that they left a pair of pajamas behind them. They flew back home in May. So <laughs> Tom went back again in November. He's more than soon. They get the pair of pajamas. <laughs> 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 Now, finally, we have one more presentation to make, and I'd like to call an old secretary to do this, because the man you're presenting this to served in the Western Command, and John being a member of the Western Command, so I thought it would be appropriate for the Western Command man to give the other person a that's uh, just a wee bit of history here on this year. I'm not going to go into a terrible lot. I'm an NCOs course, trained by fantastic NCOs in the Western Command. Tag myself for Western Command. Him a hell of a lot earlier than I was, Pathfinder. But uh, I'm eternally grateful to those who trained us in the Western Command. They were absolutely fantastic NCOs. And I never knew until years later that these guys had fought in Jadabo. Now many of our men here, our, co our comrades, our friends, our heroes who fought in in, in uh, back out in the Congo, they all were, they were all actually involved in skirmishes here and there. Some big skirmishes. Jadabo is probably the one most to, to mind at the moment to most people. But uh, we're proud of all our Congo heroes in this in this uh, post. So I have the pleasure now to make a presentation for myself to a fellow Western Command man. We weren't too sure what to present, because we have all the different weapons there, with a bow and arrow, with a Gusta, <laughs> with an FN, and with the 303 there, giving the patty as well. Just So we weren't too sure what we were going to give this man. Can I ask you now, what were you doing in Jadabo? What were you in charge of? Not the drink, don't talk about drink. No. You were in charge of? The martyrs. Talk to me while. <laughs> Find this. Oh. But this is a marker. We're proud to know you, Ty. We're all proud to know you. We're proud to know all these heroes who served in the Congo. Now, this is not better than properly, but you'll know how to do that. <laughs> Two foot legs are even dodgy. You're a man of apologies. So be careful with that. We'll, we'll pack it up for you after. Sean? Just move, move. Yeah. So I can see. So I turn this around so yeah. you can see the mortar. You can bend that one, buddy. Just look at the look the side. That way, a small yeah, bit. Yeah. Is you okay there? That's it. We get another. Yeah. Have you ever heard of a double feed on a mortar? No. Never. Never. Yes. Did you? Yes. 
Who, who did you ever hear? Oh, I heard about the Glenn Bumal. Well, I'm the only survivor of a double feed. A little. On an 81 millimetre model. I don't mean this is a boat. And I ended up in hospital. And I went from the hospital to the convoy. Because we were training for the convoy. And we had a shoot on. And I was the number two feeding the thing. There you are. I was too quick. I was blown out in the trench and they had to talk all day. You're looking at that sort of trap. No, no. I know it's like you're talking about the one bottle. But this is, this is Wilco Brennan. There was someone mentioned Wilco Brennan. Wilco? Wilco? Yeah, that was my. He was firing the 84 down mm -hmm. below, before, you know, ahead of us. Yeah. And the one, one bomb went one way, and the other bomb went the other way. Do you see? And it landed down inside him. Now, this is a general story. And whoever was the second on the 84, their helmets were not down. And we'll go see the bomb, grab your man's helmet and put it on. As you do it. And this guy, he's going to be back up here. Come on. Well, Just yeah. hang on a minute and get the, the port going. Yeah. 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 Can I have your attention a minute? I just want to find something out here. My second trip to the Congo, this gentleman's father, Sergeant, and I didn't know him at this stage, even though I was in Kerry myself. But he called me aside one day, and he said, Flynn, come here, I want to work with you. See? And he said, come down here to me. See? And he said, what's the crack out here? That's the way he said to me, you know. What? Now, I had to read between the lines, as much to say, you don't do what you do back in the barracks. But I said, Sergeant, if I get what you mean, I said, this. You're not in the barracks anymore when you're out here. That's all I want. Carry on, he says. <laughs> <laughs> he says, he, he, was, he wanted to be switched on. Because, Jimmy, while he's sleeping, he'll get shot there.